and welcome to the Bankers View from Feleban, the largest gathering of Latin American bankers, uh, which this year is being held in Miami. Um, I'm here with John Han, who is the Global Head of Trade for Citi. And John, we were on stage just a few minutes earlier uh, ago talking about uh, trade flows between Asia and Latin America and the impact that these have on banks. And so a lot of the questions we got from the audience really were about trade finance. Everybody was keen to ask you in particular about trade finance and uh, regulation. Um, how big a headache is still regulation for you? Well, I think it's a, it's a, it's a very big headache for us right now. Um, there's a variety of different issues. Some of it is that we don't actually know what the regulations are. They're still being drafted, etc. Then if you look at trade, at least in my mind, trade is part of the real world economy. It truly drives economic growth, drives jobs, etc. It's not a very, very risky product. Yet when you look at it from a regulator point point of view, they're not really differentiating on a product set. They're painting it all the same with the same brush. Regulations are obviously important. If you go back to the events of 2008, 2009, you know, the banking industry didn't do a great job, right? We, we, we sold, I guess, some very, very highly risky products, etc. We're paying the price for it. Um, regulation, I think, is good in, in, in the appropriate amount. But we also, at the same time, want to make sure that we don't impact the rest of the world, that we don't end up with an overregulated environment. Uh, you know, for trade, there's still a lot of different things we don't know, and it's going to be it's going to be a while, uh, and I think it's going to be interesting times. And the risk, obviously, is that a lot of the uh, trade financing business um, can be pushed outside of the banking sector, which is not as regulated. Um, are you seeing already a lot of these um, trends um, developing? Well, I think it's still very early, right? But we are seeing a, a variety of new firms starting up um, that are looking to do, you know, trade finance, etc. In the sectors that the banking, the banks are leaving, you're starting to see hedge funds, uh, you know, get into things like project finance, which is part of trade, getting into just traditional trade flows. You know, we get approached on a fairly regular basis by different new funds that are forming, looking for capital, looking to do different types of financing, etc. So, I think there is a, a potential risk that you could move not all but a significant amount of this to an unregulated bank environment where or non-bank environment where all of a sudden the regulators don't really have an idea of what's going on um, you know what's interesting is we get asked all the time from different regulatory agencies what's going on in trade how are trade flows etc and you know if you take it from that regulated environment that we're in today and put it in an unregulated environment getting that kind of information is going to be much harder and obviously we are here to talk about Latin America in, in particular. Uh, what is the trade finance, uh, finance market in Latin America at the moment? What are the key trends you're seeing? Look, Latin America continues to do very, very well. Um, again, most of the emerging market was able to avoid the crisis that we saw in the, in the European banks and the U.S. banks. Um, you know, the reliance on, on Latin America with Asia is, you know, getting interesting. So now when we look at risk, we're all of a sudden starting to correlate China and Brazil, which were, which were pairs that we never correlated before. Because, you know, you can see that if China has a, a major slowdown, it's going to impact the Brazilian economy. I think overall, I think that, you know, the Latin American banks are doing very, very well. Um, but one of the big concerns you still have, and I, I'm not sure it's well known, you know, our statistics say somewhere between 85 to 90 percent of world global trade is still denominated in U.S. dollars, right? And that makes sense if you look at commodity prices, they're all U.S. dollar based, etc. When, um, you know, you start looking at the regulations, you look at the, the supplemental leverage ratio, etc., most of the large OECD banks, who are the ones being the most regulated, are the ones that are providing those U.S. dollars to the Latin American banks for them to finance their underlying exports, imports, etc. So, I mean, the whole financial economy, in my mind, is very, very much in interconnected. And while you may be trying to fix a regulation in one sector, you may actually be killing, you know, another part of the world just because you're not making that capital available to them to continue doing their types of business. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you.